Well, you know, guys, I love looking up uh, players who are obscure. You know what I'm talking about, the old Moonlight Graham type, the players who uh, barely got any sort of action in the major leagues, uh, guys who we know very, very little about. So uh, we're going to look up one today, um, and we're just going to jump straight into it. This is from 1908, and this is our good friend John Sullivan. John Sullivan played with the Pirates. He had one game, two plate appearances, 1908, one at bat. And he actually walked once, not zero times, and we'll get into that in a second. He also played 1905 for the Tigers very, very briefly, batting 156. Assuming this is correct, and I have no reason to doubt it, he was 32 when he showed up in Detroit, and um, he was uh, 35 by the time he got to uh, Pittsburgh. He only lived until 1924. Go check out his minor league stats briefly, and you'll see that he had uh, somewhat of a minor league career. When the uh, Tigers brought him up, uh, he was hitting, it looks like, 264 in St. Paul, which isn't exactly earth-shattering, nor did he have a huge slugging percentage, but I'm guessing that the Tigers were in need of something uh, as way, by way of a catcher. Um, he didn't last long in Detroit and ended up going back down to the minor leagues, ended up in uh, Topeka, then Kansas City, and was with Kansas City for a while when Pittsburgh uh, went and got him. And as we'll see, he then went back to Kansas City. Now, the uh, 1908 Pirates, um, it's kind of hard because we don't have this sort of game-by-game -game listing of the catchers and when they were with the team and when they weren't. I have to assume that Patty O'Connor by that time was no longer with the team. Um, but let's take a quick look and see. And yeah, O'Connor was uh, off the team, looks like, uh, after August. And so my guess is that Sullivan came on to sort of replace O'Connor. Uh, you had Gibson as the main catcher and Phelps. The other question is, um, was Phelps still on the team around that time? And he was, actually. So Phelps would have been your backup. Sullivan basically then the third string catcher on this team. Go take a look here at the famous uh, baseball uh, reference, the BR bullpen. And there's no information about him. Just what I told you here, he was a year older than Honus Wagner in 1908. Um, he was apparently 27 before he started playing minor league ball. I think apparently is right because I have a feeling he was probably bouncing around the baseball scene before then. Uh, played uh, for Denver in 1900, and we looked a lot of this stuff up already. And there's not a whole bunch of information out there about him. Apparently, he's uh, buried in uh, Evanston, Illinois. And he's the earliest of the five major leaguers named John Sullivan. Now, when we look at the newspapers, one of the problems that we have is that there are a lot of men named John Sullivan, which makes it a little bit difficult to uh, find him. And as you'll see in a second, we have other problems too. So uh, we're going to go over here and take a look. This is from the Kansas City Journal on September 2nd, 1908. Uh, blue Battery joins Pirates. called Blue because it was the Kansas City Blues back then. Sullivan and Brandom left for Cincinnati last night. Chester Milton, Chuck Brand, Chick Brandom, sorry, and Jack Sullivan, they call him Jack here, left for Cincinnati last night and will arrive there tonight when they will join the Pittsburgh Club of the National League, to which team they were sold a few days ago. They were escorted to the train last night at 7 o'clock by a party of friends who have been boosters for the local stars all season. Brandom is expected to make good in the big league in better shape than did Joe Wood, who has failed to do any good for Boston so far. Famous last words. Brandom may not be used this season, but he will be put through a hard training and will be ready for next year. Maybe that Dreyfus is figuring on Chick to help his club land the pennant. It is a certainty that he is about the best twirler to ascend from this league this year. Sullivan ought to make good in the major organization without any trouble. Sullivan is a great catcher, and that is what the National League needs, especially Pittsburgh. Apparently they didn't. <laughs> This is the next day, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, new uh, players report, Brandon and Sullivan joined the Pirate team at Cincinnati. A pitcher, Brandon and catcher John Sullivan, purchased by Pittsburgh from Kansas City, reported today, and will go home with the Pirates tomorrow night. Brandon may get a chance tomorrow to show what he can do. And uh, then there's a non-related bit here in this article, which is so common for articles at this time, so we'll skip past that. This is uh, from after that game. So this is the Pittsburgh Press, as you can see up there, under additional sporting news. And uh, all it says here is catcher Sullivan got his first trial yesterday. He is a big fellow and looks good, but has much to learn, which is about as interesting as um, that uh, BR bullpen piece that we saw about him. I mean, there's just no information there at all. This is a little bit better in the uh, Pittsburgh Sunday Post. There's a description here of the game that took place. The uh, Cubs absolutely demolished the uh, Pirates 11 to nothing, uh, getting their revenge as the Pirates were laid out. Now, the part that interests us comes up here. There was there were a lot of uh, issues here with uh, Gibson. Uh, Gibson, uh, for example, uh, made a really bad throw uh, trying to uh, catch a, uh, a Chicago runner. Um, 
uh, Shekard it was um, who uh, went to uh, second uh, base after Gibson made a poor throw over to Honus Wagner, the ball going through uh, Wagner's uh, glove and hitting him on the collarbone. Apparently he was okay because he stayed into this ball game. Gibson then did throw a runner out trying to steal um, third. Uh, that was uh, clean, uh, but the Cubs scored a number of runs in that inning. And then when we went to the top of the sixth inning, the manager, Fred Clark, sent a new battery into the fray. Lever pitching in Jack Sullivan, again Jack, the Kansas City lad donning the mask. That's uh, when Sullivan got his uh, defensive introduction to major leagues in 1908. I mean, he'd been around in 1905 very, very briefly. Go take a look here at uh, the batting, and uh, there wasn't uh, too much. Sullivan hit a ground ball to... Uh, I'm sorry, this is... I'm looking on the uh, wrong side. Go look at the batting here. I'm going to try to figure out where um, we come up. Sullivan was safe on a wild throw, uh, so he actually reached base the time that he made an out. Um, Rulbach uh, threw his uh, bounder wildly and went to uh, Sullivan went to second, but he was not able to score. Um, and then he walked in the eighth inning. That was his one walk for the season, uh, which didn't do anything because the man was struck out, and then there was a grind, ground ball to a third base. Shannon was uh, thrown out of first, and that's sort of the way that that one ends. Now, he did um, throw out uh, Schultz trying to steal again. Uh, I'm guessing second base, actually. Wagner must have been playing at second. Um, so uh, he did a little bit there in defense, but not very much. As you can see here, this box score was completely um, destroyed uh, by uh, before the uh, microfilm was able to be created. But uh, fortunately, we do have a box score here, though it is in incomplete. Um, so uh, Sullivan had uh, one at bat, made an out, but it wasn't really an out. He got a board on an air and uh, had a walk, giving him an on-base percentage, technically a 500, though it should really be a 1,000. And there's no fielding information, but we know that he had an assist at least. Um, the Pirates with uh, five errors in that game, that would have been an ugly one to watch. Now, the thing that you have to realize is that with uh, these ball players, they don't just uh, go down to die, right? What happens to ball players when they're done is they go somewhere. And in this case, Sullivan uh, went back to Kansas City. So uh, this is from the Kansas City uh, Times, Saturday, September 12th, 1908. John Sullivan No Piker, there's your nickname. Former Blue spurned the contract offered by Pittsburgh. Owner Dreyfus um, asserts that he promised John $350 for the rest of the season. Sullivan is on the way to Kansas City. After a large row in which he told the owners of the Pittsburgh team what he thought of them, catcher Jack Sullivan is on his way back to join the Kansas City team. President Dreyfus of the Pittsburgh club would not give the Kansas City catcher what he thought was right in the matter of salary, and Sullivan demanded that he be returned to the American Association team. This was done, and the Pittsburgh team announced tonight that Sullivan had been sent back to Kansas City. Um, only one side, the Dreyfus end, can be gotten here tonight. Sullivan joined the Pittsburgh team with pitcher Brandon at Cincinnati last week, and since coming to Pittsburgh has been much in evidence warming up pitchers. He has also taken part in one game here, rather the last half of a game. Correct. He had been very popular. It would appear that Sullivan, not having heard anything about money, went to manager Clark yesterday and asked him what he was doing. He was referred to Dreyfus, who said tonight that he offered the catcher $350 for the rest of the season, but that he indignantly refused this amount and, growing impertinent, was sent back to Kansas City. The Pittsburgh club announced that, though it has now a string on Sullivan for next year, it is not likely that he will be called on. Dreyfus is very angry, and it is understood that he was balled out properly by Sullivan when he made the, him the offer. And it gives you kind of a uh, glimpse here at what was going on in terms of contracts. 1908 was still sort of the fast and loose era. Um, my understanding, and I've said this before, is that players would come up um, occasionally for trials or for like one-day contracts or one-week contracts, stuff like that. And um, as we can see here, they weren't always um, aware of how much money they were supposed to be making. Sullivan was not a kid. He was 35 years old and had been in the major leagues before. And it looks like uh, the Pittsburgh uh, club was trying to pull one over on him. And so they just went ahead and got rid of him. Um, whether that was the right thing to do or not is a question, but... Um, I mean, we don't have much much evidence that Sullivan was able to do much at the major league level because he didn't have much of a chance. And this is followed up here um, in the end by this from the Kansas City Post, uh, November 1st, 1908. John will stay. Hatcher Sullivan will be a caw again next year. Some dope on new players. 
Uh, Jack Sullivan will gamble behind gamble, interesting word, behind the Association Park home plate another season. This good news transpired today when it became known that Barney Dreyfus had secured waivers on the popular caw catcher and would return him to Kansas City. So they had to wait for wafer, or for waivers as well. And that's about it. That's uh, about the extent of the research that I've done here on Sullivan to figure things out about him. I bet I could find a lot more if I took the time to really dig through the uh, newspapers there in Kansas City and in other places that he played. Uh, but there you have it. You can see that uh, even somebody like John Sullivan, who uh, played in only one game, two plate appearances in 1908, ends up having actually a pretty interesting story. And uh, so there is the beginning of our saga of the uh, great unknown players, the obscure players that uh, you never hear about anywhere else. Again, I don't know if he really was a major league quality catcher or not. There's not a lot of evidence that he could hit at that level, right? Um, his OPS plus, and I'm looking at this again, I'll show this to you, is uh, listed as as a minus 100 for 1908. But then again, baseball reference is incorrect, as we say, because he has a walk. It's listed here as zero walks. So I don't know what it takes to upgrade uh, to update this page. Kind of odd to have two plate appearances, one at bat, but um, no walk. There's not a whole lot of other things that can happen. So anyway, there you have it. Um, but uh, Sullivan, with his uh, 0.2 career war, um, probably was a little bit better than that. Was he major league caliber? I don't know. Kind of odd to have a 35-year-old. My guess is that there might be some minor league record for a Jack Sullivan from before, and that is probably the same guy. But uh, who knows? Maybe you can figure something out on that. Talk to you guys again later. Bye-bye.